بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آهل وصحبه ومن ولا In the name of Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon His final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and all those who follow him until the day of judgment. Wanted to share some ayats from Surah Luqman. Many times when these ayahs are related, the, the ayahs that are related are the ones related to Luqman. So they will begin with ayah 12, which says, لَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We have given Luqman al-Hikmah. Right? But it is very important to look at the surah as a whole. And the, the surah, Surah Luqman, revolves around the strong belief in the oneness of Allah. Right? So in the beginning, in, in ayah, without going too back, ayah 10 and 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He created the heavens and the earth, He created the heavens without any pillars that you see, and has set on the earth firm mountains lest it should shake with you. And he has scattered therein moving creatures, moving living creatures of all kinds. And we send down water, rain from the sky, and we cause the plants to grow of every go goodly kind. And then he says, This is the creation of Allah. This is the creation of Allah. So show me that which those whom you worship besides him, besides Allah, what have they created? Then he says, But the wrongdoers, nay, the wrongdoers are in plain error. They're in, in a clear, manifest error. Then Allah says, so this is the, those who associate partners with Allah, those who are not, who associate partners with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we look at, at the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors whatever He wants, whomever He wills. Allah is the one who is able to favor and give. For example, Allah says in Surah, when Allah mentions that He gave the revelation to a prophet who didn't know how to read or write. In Surah Juman, then Allah says, ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ ذُو الْفَضْلِ الْعَظِيمِ That is a favor from Allah. He gives it to whom, whoever, he, whoever He wills, right? And Allah is the owner of all bounties, right? If you just look outside, you might see some trees, leafless. They don't look in good shape, but then you have other trees that look green. If you just reflect, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose some prophets to some, he sp to, to, to Musa he spoke. To others, he inspired in, in dreams. To the Prophet Sallallahu he sent the angel Jibreel, alayhi salam. So he favors whom he wills. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one who favors. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala demonstrates his ability when, for example, Musa, alayhi salam, kana khatiban, he was given a khutbah, given a speech, and he says, to Bani Israel, I am the most knowledgeable of all. But he didn't attribute knowledge to Allah. So Allah wanted to correct him. And Allah told him, go to this place, you will find a servant of mine who is not a prophet, who has some knowledge that you do not have. And that is the story of Musa and Khidr. If you look back in, in Tafsir uh, Ibn Kathir, you find it. So, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, mentions Luqman. Luqman wasn't a prophet, 
but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named a chapter after him. And Allah blessed him with wisdom. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ And اشْكُرْ لِلَّهِ We have given him the wisdom. And the wisdom is, is knowledge of Allah's rules and legislation. Right? Allah legislate what He wills. Allah, He is the one that gives the rules. Allah prescribes because in His divine, He is all wise. So Allah blessed Luqman with wisdom. And for example, like uh, Shaykh Saadi rahimahullah said, that a man, a person can be an alim, right? وَلَا يَكُونُ حَكِيمًا he maybe has a lot of knowledge, amassed a lot of knowledge, but maybe he lacks the wisdom of implementing that knowledge. Right? Sometimes we, we have encountered those situations when sometimes it's just black and white. And it's not black and white. Right? Things need to be understood. And Allah says in, in the same Surah Juma, Allah gives the, 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 the unlettered prophet, right? al uh, uh, Gave him the book, the, 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 his ayah, right? Why you him, so he could purify them. them. Why you allimuhum al kitab and teach them the book, the law, wal hikmah, and the wisdom, how to implement that law, when, and how to implement that law. And that is what also that's that's a full, comprehensive approach in Islam. It's not just halal, haram, halal, haram. No, no. Things need to be understood. Circumstances need to be understood. So now, the only condition that the, Allah SWT gave Luqman was to be thankful to Allah. Right? And then he told them, and whoever is thankful is only to the benefit of himself. Because Allah SWT is the rich, worthy of all praise. He's not in need of our thankfulness. He doesn't need us. Then he mentions when Luqman came to his son and he advised him and he said, Ya Bunaya, oh my son, right? He said, La tushrik billah. Do not associate partners with Allah. Do not love anything above Allah. Right? The limit of love, right, is in the disobedience of Allah. If loving takes us to the disobedience of Allah, then we stop there. We don't obey in that. So then he says, Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. The worst of all evils that can be done on the earth is associating partners with Allah. Loving others more than Allah. Loving our wealth more than Allah. Not, not, not forgetting that Allah is the provider. Loving our physical, uh, our strength, right? And attributing to oneself, to one's workout. Knowing that Allah is the powerful. Allah is the one that blesses us with His favors. Then he mentions in the, in the following ayah, that we have, en we have enjoined upon the man to be dutiful to his parents. And then he mentions, This is very important. What does wahn ala wahn mean? Can anybody tell me? We have, in the translation it says, we have his mother bore him weakness, and hardship upon weakness and hardship. When you stop and think, right, sometimes when you stop and think, the mother was sentenced to nine months, some less, to carry the child. We carry a bag for an hour, we complain. Right? The mother has no choice. She can't take off the baby and put him down. I'll carry him later. No. So she carries it from nine months. That's one. 
This is in, in Tafsir Jalalain. Second is when, the, when that baby separates the mother internally. It separates from the mother. That's another hardship. Second. Third, when she gives birth. Then she gets sentenced to two years again to nurse him. Right? To feed him. And then when we grow up, we forget our mothers. We love everybody else above our mothers. We yell at our mothers. We talk back to our mothers. We don't understand the wisdom of our mothers, so we, you know, they love us so much that we feel that we have the authority to talk back to them. So Allah reminds us that Allah enjoined upon man to be dutiful to his mother, right? And then he says, she bore him in hardship and difficulties, right? And then weaned him for two years. And then he says, give thanks to me and to your parents. See, give thanks to Allah and to your parents, but remember that to me is your return. It all goes back to Allah. Then he says, and if they, if the parents, strive to make you join in worship with Allah, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Don't obey them. But it doesn't mean don't obey them in everything. Don't obey them in that. And the example of Sa'd ibn Waqqas, this ayah was, was revealed about Sa'd ibn Waqqas. Right? Don't obey them in that. But then he says, but keep company in this world, a kindly company. Honor them. Right? Honor them. Like, for example, the sons of Ali, radiallahu anhu, used to say, that when we walk, when we walk, our, during the day, we don't walk except behind our father. And during the night, we don't walk except in front of him. And I do not stand and my father is sitting. And I do not rise in a place and my dad is below me. So then when he explained, he said, and I do not walk during the day except behind him in honor of him. And, and I do not walk during the night except in front of him to protect him. These are the, the manners, the etiquettes in Islam. So even if that parent tells you worship something with Allah, you still have to honor them in that way. But you disobey them in associating partners with Allah. La ta fi maasiyatil khaliq. There is no obedience in the disobedience of the Creator. There is no obedience in the disobedience of the Creator. So inshallah, we're going to wrap it up. Then, after reminding him, because he's advising, right? After reminding him of the duties to the parents, he says, Oh, my son. Now he's giving him awareness of al-hisab, right? Or al-muhasaba, of accountability. And he says, Oh, my son, if the equal of a grain or a mustard seed or an atom, right? is on the rock, or in the heavens, or on the earth. Ya'ti biha Allah. Allah has the ability to bring it forth. You do not see it, but he is able to see it. Like it mentions in another part in the Quran, if a leaf falls from a tree, Allah knows what leaf falls and which one grows. And we, we're not aware of it. We just see fall, leaves fall, and that's it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge is all encompassing. And then He said, Verily Allah is subtle, well acquainted. So we take that into our deeds. A big, de a big good deed or small deed or a, a, a bad deed, a sin, Allah is able to bring it forth. Even if nobody knows it and is in secret, Allah knows. Allah will bring it forth. And there will be a day of accountability where we're going to have to answer for those, for what we do in private. For even what's going on within our hearts. How do I feel when I'm in the masjid? 
it's very important for us to know, to, to, to take in consideration the small things so that we, won't, <laughs> we will appreciate also the big things. Then he mentions after teaching him about awareness of Allah and the accountability of Allah, the accountability that we will be uh, accounted for in the day of judgment, then comes the obligation. Ya bunayya aqim as salah. Oh my son, observe, establish prayer. And then he says, and command and join what is good and forbid what is evil. In, in joining what is good and forbidding what is evil and being upright and being a Muslim, that's what it means. And being an upright Muslim with istiqamah, that you individually, responsibly observe your salah without being ba ba babysat. You know, you, you're responsible. You, you, you're responsible, you know. Right? And you have technology, you have smartphones, right? That can tell you what time is salah, where's the qibla, all that. Right? You have that. Sometimes we need to make our smartphones smarter. Put the Quran application. Put some hadith. Put some, you know, make them smarter, inshallah. So observe the salah and command what is good and forbid what is evil. And then he tells us, Wasbir ala ma asabak and be patient, persevere. Know that in being upright and in doing what's right and forbidding what's wrong, there's hardship. It's not easy. Because a lot of people go one direction. And when you choose to go against that traffic, there's obstacles. And Allah tells us, Wasbir ala ma sabak. Be patient with anything that you encounter. Inna dhalika min azmil umur. And that is amongst the, the difficult matters. That is very, is, is challenging. Then after reminding us of salah and enjoining what's right, forbidding what's evil, then he tells his son, Ya bunayya, O my son, don't turn your face away from people in pride. And do not walk in the, on the earth, on Allah's earth, with insolence. Verily, Allah does not love the arrogance, the one that shows off. Allah loves the humble. Right? When, when a person humbles himself to Allah, Allah raises him up in status. Our status is not, I am great because I am from this country. Or I am great because I have Allah endow me with this wealth. But I am great because I am a Muslim. And Allah says that the most honorable of you, inna akramakum indallah at qakum. The most honorable in the eyes of Allah is the most God conscious. You want to be the most honorable? Remember Allah the most. Then he mentions, finally, and be moderate in your walking and, and also moderate in your tone of voice. Be moderate in your tone of voice. And then he gives them an example very the harshest of all voices is that of the donkey. So this is just some pointers. One is to love Allah above all things. Two is to honor your parents unconditionally, even if you do not understand their wisdom. Three, to know that Allah SWT is able to hold you accountable on the day of judgment. And he is merciful and he is forgiven. That's how we must constantly be, uh, be continuous in our making of istighfar. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. You know, don't wait. And then observe your prayers. Enjoy what is good. Forbid what is evil to the best of your ability. And be patient. Be patient and be humble. Be humble in your, in your walk, in your talk and in your, in your dealings with others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's teachings. May Allah forgive us our shortcomings. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanat wa fil akhirati hasanat wa qina adha wa nar. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajwain. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.